International debt inspectors are having trouble visiting key ministries in Greece because angry workers are occupying them in their latest anti-austerity protests. The delegation in are in Athens to decide whether Greece is fit enough for another portion of the bailout, the government's last chance to evade a collapse later this month. The decision was suspended earlier over doubts that the country is doing enough to reduce its enormous debt. Well, leaders have pushed through pension cuts and extra taxes to try and please their creditors, but the public remains convinced that the relentless austerity policy is only making things worse. Well, RT Sarah Firth reports now from Athens. Greece has been the poster child of the Eurozone debt crisis. With Germany voting to expand the bailout fund, the country looks set to get that much needed cash injection. But the helps come with some conditions. And here in Greece, the people say that the price they're being made to pay is simply too high. Burning the bill. It's deadline day for the first to be hit with the Greek government's new special tax. It's one of the measures they've put in place to try to secure the next tranche of money the country needs to avoid bankruptcy. The extra tax, which is thought to deduct about another 3% from people's annual income, is supposed to help plug some of the massive deficit in the budget. But after more than a year of salary cuts and rises in living costs, the people here are already at breaking point. The last two years, almost everybody has lost at least 30% of his salary of, or of his uh, pension. Erikos Finalis is from the opposition movement entitled We Won't Pay. He tells me how the movement's expanded rapidly in recent months as more and more people hit that financial wall. Before the people, most of the people were not paying because they wanted to protest against an un unjust situation. Now there are thousands and dozens of thousands of people who will not pay because of necessity. People's desperation has become increasingly evident on the streets of Greece, where violence has repeatedly broken out between riot police and protesters. Tuesday saw even more clashes as Parliament again voted in yet another austerity measure in the form of a new property tax. They were organising all this just to put Greece under IMF just for political reasons. Greece and Greeks do not need IMF. Many people in Greece now question just who it is that's in control. Unfortunately today, the real leaders in Eurozone are the bankers. The real leader of the Eurozone is Mr. Trisset from European Central Bank. Bankers are not paying, shareholders are not paying, and who is called to pay again and again and again are the citizens and the taxpayers in the Eurozone. Despite Germany having voted positively to expand the size and power of the European bailout fund, already critics are questioning just whether that will be enough. And sites now turn to the many challenges the Eurozone still faces. If the problem will move from Greece and will start touching other European countries, then the German banks to the end will suffer a lot. So even Germany that we say is the most healthy economy in the European Union, uh, will be affected if we don't find a solution today, not just for Greece, but for all the European Union countries. With past measures failing to have effect, and as political leaders continue to struggle to convince their public, the future of the Eurozone still hangs in the balance. With these protests over strict austerity measures set to continue, many people here have said that Greece is a country now at risk of having not only a financial but a democratic deficit as well. Sarah Firth, RT, outside the Parliament building in Athens. All right, well, let's try and get a handle on how this might pan out in the coming days. Pavel Svidliki is a researcher and analyst with the Open Europe Organization. Uh, Mr. Svidliki, so the bailout policy, it hasn't yet delivered the decisive blow to tackling Europe's debt, has it? But what is your analysis on why the Eurozone members are just so committed to it? Well, the problem is that so many of the current... Um leaders and decision makers, uh, the same people who, who came up with the policies in the first place uh, to do with the Eurozone. So in times of crisis and great doubt, because we are in uh, uncharted territory, let's remember here, uh, they fall back on their default suppositions, and which are more centralization and uh, 
essentially the same policies that have uh, led us to this point. Uh, I think they have too much invested in it, both uh, politically and uh, economically, because remember that banks in the Eurozone countries are holding a lot of Greek debt. So I think they just feel they've, they might as well go down this road, All right, but you're, you're, uh, no one really knows where we're going to end up. Oh. All right. Uh, you, you were mentioning earlier that it is the same people that uh, put the, uh, brought the Eurozone together. So if back then it was political will that brought the Eurozone together, do you think that political will will be able to keep, get it out of this uh, quagmire, the problem that it's in? I think there's a fundamental difference because when the Eurozone was being uh, established, it was sold to the people, especially uh, in, in, in Germany, uh, on the basis that, that there would be no bailouts, that, uh, the, that the northern states wouldn't be bailing out the southern members. And now that, and, and now that this cat is out of the bag, I think it'll be very difficult to, uh, to bring together the necessary political will to, uh, to keep it together. And we saw, we saw signs of that in yesterday's uh, debate in, in the uh, Bundestag, where, where Angela Merkel did, did, did get the majority that she needed. But uh, persuading members of her own coalition proves to be very, very difficult. All right, let's talk about the actual bailout fund. I mean, even the expanded one, is it enough to help Greece? I mean, you're backing at 211 billion euros of debt. It seems like a drop in the ocean, especially when Greece's deed alone is around 300, 350 billion. So will it even help at all? No, uh, you're completely right to say that, that this isn't enough, really. And uh, the problem is that the markets know this. Uh, Greece, is an, uh, Greece has an effective funding gap of between 120 and 160 billion euros, in addition to, uh, to the funds that it's already receiving under the first bailout package. And uh, the markets know this, and they consider the Greek default to be inevitable. OK. Uh uh, you, Greece is now facing an ultimatum. It's basically more cuts or no cash injection. Do you think that they will actually go that far? Considering earlier you mentioned that their their banks are exposed to a lot of Greece's debt if it does go under. So is that an empty threat? Well, like I said, we, we are in we are in uh, uncharted territory, and uh, <laughs> it'd be a very brave. Per it would take a very brave person to speculate as to exactly how this might pan out. I think we are really. Um, testing the limits of the current system to destruction. Uh, we saw earlier the uh, protests in Athens uh, because they're, they're clearly unhappy with the uh, austerity measures being imposed, the latest of which is the property tax. And also in, um, in, in countries like Germany and Finland and even in um, Slovakia, we're seeing a lot of discontent with, uh, with the measures. And remember, these are just the measures agreed back in July to boost the, um, the effective capacity of the bailout fund. The, uh, you know, we haven't even really got to the stage where, where, these, where national parliaments are going to consider the uh, bailout package of right. two, 2 trillion euros, which is what's estimated that, that is needed to contain a Greek default. OK, just very, very quickly now, talking about Germany, how far do you think it can go before it undermines its own credit worthiness? Well, we saw with the downgrade of, uh, of, of U.S. debt earlier this year that um, nothing is sacred, and certainly Germany's AAA rating, although it's not in danger at the moment, there is, there is definitely a limit to how much uh, stress it could take. And as I said earlier, the, the German public, I, I don't think the German public would allow it to get to the point where, uh, where for example, we would, uh, there's plans, uh, mooted plans to, to leverage the bailout fund through the ECB. I think for, for the Germans, that would definitely be uh, um, a step too far. All right. Thanks very much for your analysis there. Pavel Swidlicki, researcher and analyst with the Open Europe Organization. Thank you.